Today we take you inside a never before seen abandoned location, a cult-like school that is infamous for abuses and brainwashing. You know, let them do this, let them do that, let them express themselves. Well, that's nonsense. Everybody knows that successful people are people who are disciplined. Please be advised, this video contains archival scenes that are as troubling for me as they may be now for you. Sadly, these events were everyday occurrences at this facility, which accepted both government and privately funded delinquent youths who were seen as unmanageable by other programs. Operating from the 1970s until around 10 years ago, this school was the brainchild of a well-known local businessman who had suspected mafia and drug ties. It now sits abandoned and decaying in the woods. While a very well-regarded program on the outside, charging hefty sums to parents of the children it claimed to help, the organization held a dark side which led two states to label it as an abusive facility and to stop sending students to it. Despite this, it continued to operate for decades, making the owner, who had no experience in psychology or any field related to it, very rich. Lurid details of the facility from survivors report students' phone calls, letters, and movements being restricted and controlled by staff who would edit them or script them. Other survivors say that each member was made to do grueling and often pointless tasks, such as digging large holes and filling them in. A strict pecking order of students was in place, and a school-based jargon was used by everyone. Members were subjected to regular verbal dressing downs by other students of higher rank, or orchestrated general meetings where they were verbally attacked by their peers. The scene you just saw was part of a process known as attack therapy, which was inspired by another group, the Cyanon Organization, which had been a drug rehab program in the 1960s in California. It was well known for truth-telling sessions, or the Cyanon Game, and later morphed into the Church of Cyanon cult in the 1970s, which collapsed after involvement with attempted murder and terrorism. As we head inside the school, it is quite amazing as to what is still here. Literally everything sits as it was left on the last day of operation, even the paperwork. Many survivors mention that infractions or missteps were punishable by being put in a tiny isolation room for weeks, being forced to write an error-free report, to be allowed to sleep, being made to face a wall for months, or being forced to sit in a dumpster filled with trash for weeks on end. If 
the student somehow made it through the program, the ordeal lasted over a year and a half. They often then became fully indoctrinated paid staff with no credentials. Those who rebelled against the program were forced into a fight club-like ritual. Here the founder of the program defends the idea. We have the ring, okay, which uh, everybody misinterprets. It's, it's not a boxing ring, it's a ring of human people. Tragically, this ritual is tied to a still open homicide, where a student is suspected to have died from a brain aneurysm the day following being thrown into the ring after being accused of faking a headache. What I was saying was that we're upfront about it, the boxing ring, the spanking, that we're into containment, controlling, and justice. The secret club is also famous for being where Michael Skakel attended later was convicted of famously murdering Martha Moxley. Children's unfinished games and piles of books lie as they did during their last use. first thing they learn is you're not going to get out of here if you burn the place down we'll sleep in a tent together uh, you know no matter how many times you run away we will go and get you the idea behind the program was to make money and to this end to keep students there as long as possible that escape was futile 
For habitual attempted escapees, stranger and more extreme punishments like the following were commonplace. Why did they put you in chains and in a rabbit suit? Because I ran away. When they put them on me, they told me not that they were going to be on me. Not until I left my ride. It's been two weeks so far. The kid has no idea what prison is like. Somebody has got to introduce to him some realistic concepts of what's ahead of him. Those things stay on him. He decides how long they stay on him, not me. While the program and the facility are closed, and the cult that inspired it is mostly disbanded, the school lives on in the memory of those it both helped and those it forever damaged. It crouches in the woods today, mutely holding its secrets, and stands as a testament and warning as to what can go wrong when an unregulated for-profit entity is allowed to care for those most at risk. Thank you for joining me today and explore with me next time as we cross the ocean to bring you a massive abandoned fortress in the sea.